Hello, amazing viewers, and welcome to Healthy Living. Perhaps one of the most tender and lovely times in a mother's life is during pregnancy. While she patiently awaits the arrival of a precious new baby, the concerned mom might begin to ask questions such as, what is the healthiest diet I can have during my pregnancy? And, what should I feed my baby when he or she is born? According to the American Dietetic Association, the world's largest association of food and nutrition professionals, well-planned vegetarian or vegan diets are appropriate for individuals during all stages of the life cycle, including pregnancy, lactation, infancy, childhood, and adolescence. In Hollywood, some famous moms-to-be are vegans. For example, American actress and PETA spokesperson Alicia Silverstone has been vegan for 15 years and is now waiting the birth of her first child. While pregnant, Ms. Silverstone continues to follow a plant-based diet and often shares her experiences in her blog. Another vegan American actress and animal rights advocate, Emily Deschanel, announced her pregnancy in March 2011. The babies of these vegan celebrities obtain complete nutrition from their mothers and will continue this earth-friendly diet after birth. Last week we covered why the vegan diet is best for women who are pregnant. In this week's program, the conclusion of a two-part series, healthcare professionals and others will discuss why plant-based foods are also best for infants and children. Breastfeeding is the ultimate display of maternal love. Breast milk contains five basic forms of antibodies which strengthen the baby's immune system and decrease the infant's susceptibility to allergies. Mother's milk is the most natural and perfect food for babies. Quando a mãe estiver amamentando, ela também deve ter uma atenção especial com a alimentação dela. Porque todos os alimentos que ela estiver consumindo, esses alimentos vão estar circulante ali no sangue. Então, do sangue vai passar sim para o leite, ah, inclusive depois para o bebê. Então, às vezes pode ter cólica, pode ter diarreia, pode ter dor abdominal. Então, ah, seria evitar mesmo esses alimentos: fritura, alimentos gordurosos, processados. La spiruline, c'est un aliment. Euh, qui peut être pris par tout le monde tout le temps, et même les bébés. Donc dans le sevrage, euh, quand euh, l'allaitement se termine, je conseille de rajouter de la spiruline dans les biberons des bébés. En poudre. En poudre, mmh. en petite quantité. La alimentation, elle doit être exclusive até aux 6 mois d'âge. Et à partir de ce moment, les aliments complémentaires sont introduits. Donc c'est important que vous fassiez cette transition de manière sûre acrescentando os alimentos que são adequados para a criança. Então, a partir dos seis meses de idade, entram as, pa as papinhas. No Brasil, é mais comum a gente entrar inicialmente com as frutas, mas em alguns países, os cereais são os primeiros alimentos a serem introduzidos. Então, isso depende da forma de, de abordagem de cada país, não está não errado nenhuma dessas formas. E, gradativamente, você vai inserir os outros grupos alimentares, de tal forma que a criança ela vai fazer uma refeição de, de frutas, uma papa né, de frutas, uma refeição entre aspas salgadas, que deve incluir basicamente alguns grupos alimentares. Então, nessa papinha deve, deve estar contido os cereais, arroz, milho, trigo, centeio, quinoa e por aí vai, os feijões, então entra qualquer tipo de feijão, inclusive grão de bico, ervilha, lentilha, tofu, e os, a, as verduras e legumes, abobrinha, chuchu, pimentão, é, couve, rúcula e qualquer outra verdura desse mesmo grupo. É importante que exista alguma fonte de óleo, porque a gente não faz restrição de, de gordura para criança até dois anos de idade. Lembrando que essa gordura deve ser de boa qualidade. Então pode ser a gordura do abacate, o azeite de oliva, o óleo de linhaça ou a própria linhaça, que é importante como fonte energética e de gorduras de boa qualidade. Então... Um prato bem desenhado para uma criança, ele vai conter mais ou menos um terço de cereais, um terço de feijões e um terço de verduras e legumes, com o óleo inserido nessa, nessa refeição. Passado alguns meses, lá pelo sétimo, oitavo mês de vida, a gente começa a introduzir a segunda papinha salgada, de tal forma que a criança tenha um almoço e um jantar, 
tem uma papinha de fruta e o restante da alimentação está sendo complementado pelo leite materno. Então ela mantém um aporte bom de cálcio e de todos os elementos que ela precisa. There is scientific evidence that consuming animal foods negatively affects the way both children and adults behave, as well as their overall mental health status. A study published in the June 2010 edition of the Nutrition Journal found that vegetarians in the U.S. were less likely to suffer from depression and more likely to be in a better mood compared to meat eaters. Ce morceau de viande est chargé de souffrance, ça rentre dans notre corps. Et finalement, les gens sont de plus en plus sujets à des angoisses inexpliquées. Par exemple, on a fait un lien très très net entre les attaques de panique et la consommation de produits laitiers. De ce qui est connu maintenant, euh, dans la physiologie euh, principalement de l'intestin grêle, on sait, alors c'est tout à fait réel, hein, ce n'est pas euh, des opinions comme ça, mm -hmm. on sait que les produits animaux induisent une hyperperméabilité de la muqueuse intestinale qui fait passer dans le sang euh, des fragments moléculaires qui ne devraient pas passer, qui vont avoir une influence directement sur notre cerveau et donc notre comportement. Donc il y a par exemple des états de panique chez l'adulte qui sont réglés simplement en supprimant les produits animaux et principalement les produits laitiers. Et alors eux, ils sont vraiment purement victimes de l'alimentation que les adultes leur fournissent. Quand on pense qu'il y a des enfants d'une année qui boivent du coca, quand je vois des bébés manger du jambon, mais, mais c'est inconcevable. Et, et après, évidemment, on a de l'agressivité. On, on a... En fait, l'enfant ne peut pas, encore moins que l'adulte, il ne peut pas s'autogérer. Quand on pense qu'actuellement, on a 6 enfants sur 10 dans les milieux scolaires qui souffrent du trouble du comportement, euh, c'est gravissime. Et euh, on voit des améliorations spectaculaires déjà juste en changeant l'alimentation. En fait, on, on se retrouve avec des, des troubles du comportement liés au fait que le cerveau est très sensible à la composition du sang et aux variations brusques. Donc, ce que tout le monde connaît, c'est les problèmes d'hypo-hyperglycémie que notre mmh. cerveau ne supporte pas et qui sont vraiment liés à l'alimentation industrielle et au fait qu'on mange des aliments cuits, morts, raffinés. Qu'à la base, les gens sont carencés en alimentation saine. Donc en fait, ils ne sont plus nourris, ils vivent sur les nerfs. Donc après, évidemment, ils vont prendre des sucres rapides, ils vont fumer, ils vont boire. Et quand le système nerveux euh, n'est plus nourri, euh, ben on devient irritable, on devient versatile, et on n'a plus de capacité de concentration. Without question, the best source of nutrition for children is the vegan diet, and the development of correct eating habits in children must start with the parents. I have so many tips for vegan moms. Um, it's really important to walk your walk, to show your kids that you enjoy the food that you're eating but also to involve kids in the cooking and learning about food process, um, to share with them why you eat the way you eat in a fun and excited way, like why you're passionate about eating greens and grains and beans and seeds, what it does for them. But also you have to learn how to cook. You have to be prepared, you have to plan ahead, you have to learn about meal planning. There are some incredible products that you can start using. One is sunflower seed butter, or you can use hemp seed butter, which is actually one of the most nutritious seed butters to use for kids because it has great iron content and incredible omega-3s. So adding that to your kid's diet will really get them the nutrition that they need. Um, so really it's, it's planning and um, making sure that you're learning how to include your child's tastes into what foods you're preparing while still offering them really healthy options. Since you have a vegan child, do you have advice for vegan children? The great thing about raising a vegan kid is that they love animals. 
children love animals. We teach them to love animals. Every book that you read to a little kid has to do with counting farm animals or playing with a puppy. So kids like animals. So it makes perfect sense to them that we would not eat those animals. I have found it's so easy. Maria Amelia of Brazil has two adorable, healthy, vegan babies. She will now share her experiences as a vegan parent. Eu nunca precisei fazer nada nas duas gestações. Os dois nasceram de parto normal. Saí do hospital em dois dias e meio. É, voltei a dirigir depois de três dias. Meu leite veio numa boa. É, tive leite suficiente. A amamenta Camila até hoje, ela está com seis meses. Ela está só no leite materno. E assim, eles são super saudáveis. O Pedro nunca tomou antibiótico, ele tem dois anos e meio. O Pedro é uma criança super ágil, super inteligente. Então, a gente fica bem tranquilo em relação a isso. Aqui em casa a gente gosta muito de tofu, então toda semana faz tofu de algum jeito. Eu comprei um livro só de receitas com tofu, então é uma coisa que eu gosto. E a Camila hoje, ela comeu a primeira papinha salgada dela, que foi de abóbora, abobrinha, arroz integral e feijão. Ela comeu, mas na verdade... Assim como todo mundo aqui em casa, acho que o forte mesmo aqui é fruta, sabe? Ela comeu caqui, banana. Eu acho que uma dica para as mães é procurar um pediatra que te apoie, te respeite, porque é sim possível ter uma criança vegana desde o início. Supreme Master Ching Hai has also spoken about why a vegan diet is so beneficial for children, as in this May 2009 video conference in Togo. Vegetarian babies and children grow up with higher resistance to illness. And from a food allergy perspective, the vegan diet immediately eliminates four out of eight or 50% of the top known allergens from your child's diet. These are milk, eggs, fish and shellfish, all of which can cause lifelong or fatal health problems. So starting our child out in life with a vegan diet could be one of the biggest gifts we can give as parents. Thank you, Marina Barone, Astrid Pfeiffer, Dr. Eric Slywich, Alexandra Jameson, and Maria Amelia for sharing your perspectives on wholesome, plant-based eating during pregnancy. May all mothers and children around the world enjoy happy vegan lifestyles. For more information on today's experts, please visit the following websites. Marina Barone, www.baronesante.com Dr. Eric Slywich and Astrid Pfeiffer, www.alimentesansaincarne.com.br Alexandra Jameson deliciousvitality.com Gracious viewers, thank you for watching this week's Healthy Living. Coming up next is Science and Spirituality after Noteworthy News. May all lives be full of joy and energy. For more details, please visit www.suprememastertv.com forward slash HL.